know, there's a learning curve when you take a new job, when you come into a new place. Um, and so having history with him, um, you know, kind of growing up in the business for a little bit and knowing his vision and things that he had, it's just going to make it a lot easier that way. Um, so I'm just excited, honestly, just to get back and closer to home for me and my family and then him running the programs. It was very enticing. Has he changed at all since the last time? Nah, that's the best part about it. When I saw him in front of the meeting room, I mean, he's, he is who he is. He has the room, he has the kids, um, and, you know, they have him. Um, and so, yeah, to, to him to become a head guy and then take the head coach bill and change, no, I didn't see any of that, you know. Um, but it's all growth, you know, on the flip side of that. I mean, he's, he's taking that role on really well. It's been fun to see, you know, working for him right now. Is this a tough decision for you, Justin, or is this a pretty easy decision? Once uh, you both. I mean, on paper, you look at it, you're like, it's a no-brainer, right? But in recruiting... Um, and development and a lot of these things. That's why college football is so awesome because it's still intimate with these kids. And so you're in the living room with their parents, you're recruiting them, you talk about what you're going to do. And then having four years of those guys, like those, you take ownership in your room. You're the general manager of your room, so those are your guys. So I say that now, they're, they're my guys and you own all of them. And so on the flip side, those phone calls and, you know, obviously with the way media and stuff goes now, it was out quick. And not to be able to be in front of those guys was, that was also hard because those were my guys. Um, but then, yes, you step back, and once you make big boy decisions to come to an elite place like this where you can recruit elite talent and develop elite talent and be around some of the best coaches in the country, yeah, I, was, I would just sprint it out here if he told me to instead of getting on the plane. Obviously, the, the, uh, the relationship with Coach Day, the tradition here at Ohio State with two main factors, how much did it help that you were a former Big Ten player yourself? I mean, and, and I believe your wife is still. Yeah, I mean, the, the familiarity of the Midwest, just in recruiting was easier for me. I mean, I recruited out here um, at previous stops, so being in the GCL, getting into Cleveland, um, yeah, up there, being able to stay at my in-laws' house instead of a hotel. Um, there was a lot of factors that go in, but absolutely, anytime you can come home, the understanding of the league, the history of this place, um, and and you know Ohio Stadium and the shoe and all that stuff. I mean, there's. I just think, like I talked before, the learning curve is going to be a lot easier because of it's not an unknown. It's something that I grew up and was around um, and, and saw that. Justin, yeah, what did that? Since you're a head coach now, offensive line coach, you guys have a run game coordinator, a pass game coordinator, an offensive coordinator, and a head coach, mm -hmm. uh, all with the offense. Mm -hmm. Is that an exciting challenge to try to make that all kind of come together? Yeah, I mean, I think it, if you let it become a challenge, it can be. But, like, we're just in there right now. I just walked out of meetings. We're just doing ball. Like, no one's wearing a shirt that has their title on it, and if, if Kevin says something or Tony says something or Brian says something, that they're not going to listen to my input and on the flip side, right? Um, I think with Ryan and what he's done here is you, you, we brought in a bunch of really good coaches. And so your development of your, of your position is key, and then the development of the scheme, right? But, I mean, statistically and what they've done here, like, the offense is pretty damn good. So I don't need to come in and revamp or change a bunch of things. I'm here to enhance and make those things better. And along the way, whether my business card had three titles or two, or none that's just what we're trying to do so if you want it to be a challenge it could be but with these guys here it's not going to be because at the end of the day we're all just in we're the offensive coaches in that unit we're just trying to get our guys better with, coach the, offensive, you, with the offensive line uh, an area where they struggled at times a little bit last year it's an area where you guys at UCLA thrive people use your film as you know this is textbook how to run the football uh, for you I guess another exciting question how exciting is it to get to work with the talent level that's here Kind of put your put your stamp on what you were able to do at UCLA with the run scheme. Bring it to you know a guy like like Donovan Jackson, like a Paris Johnson, like the, the talent that you have to work with. Today. Yeah. Is that, as a coach, like, what do you see? Man? Is that exciting? For you? Absolutely, because that's your number one job as a coach is to develop your guys, right? you got to maximize each individual kid, right? So it doesn't matter which one you're talking about, to make sure they play to their ability level. Um, so, yes, if I can enhance the scheme here and help those guys on one or two or three things uh, from a staff, that's good. And then really just the excitement of coaching, once again, the intimacy, I think I said it before, of coaching college football. You get to take an 18, 19-year-old kid and then watch him grow and develop him through that to get him ready for the next level. So the, the kids we're going to be able to recruit here, the place that this, you know, the kids that this place wants to bring in, yeah, I'm very excited for that. What did this Coach Day tell you maybe specifically he wanted you to address from offensive line play, Justin, I mean, more than anything else? Maybe it was lacking. Was it? Nah, no, he, the run game. I mean, you know, did he? No, he 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 wanted me to come in and maximize the guys, maximize the room. I mean, there was not one specifics of a D and D or a scheme or any of those things. Um, because once again, when you come in, like that's your job as a position coach. Is first and foremost is to to develop and maximize your room. And so, 
that's what he knows that he's getting with me and that's why he brought me here is that that's what I need to do is just make sure we're just enhancing these guys tool sets um, and playing at a high level when we need to person sitting from 30,000 feet looking down will win. If they live the nation in total offense and, and scoring, what needs to be fit and what needs to be enhanced and stuff? What, what do you see that maybe you do need to bring along from an offensive line? Play? Well, I think that'll. We're tasked when it looked like run, run defenses gave them a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're going to evaluate the film. You're going to watch the tape and you're going to see things that if it is going to be who we are and what we're about, how do you make it better? How do you enhance it? And there be may be some things that you bring in and say, you know what, we're not going to be that as much because of, you know, the personnel and what we have in the field. Um, you know, you learn from that, but you move on. So I, that's probably a better question for me after spring ball, once I've had my hands on these guys a lot and once we've been around these guys through individual and through team settings and those things, um, that would be a good one to come back after spring and really see what we really are honed in on that we got to make better so when we get to the fall, we're ready to go. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt. I mean, you know, the, the, the block O when you walk into the, the front door of a school, um, yeah, people see that. You know, there's a little bit of, you know, logo greed or whatever you want to say. Um, but, I mean, once again, like I, you guys will see as you're around me more, like I'm a big fundamental basics, keeping everything simple and working the way up, right? Like football in itself is blocking and tackling. That's just how it starts. You block them, they don't tackle, you score points. Whether you throw it, you run it, however you get it, right? If you don't block them, then they're going to tackle your guy, whether it's a sack, a TFL. Now put that into recruiting. It's all about relationships. you got to identify the kids that you know can play for you and, and uphold the standard that you have here. And then how do you go get those guys, right? It's not, for me, it's not with cool Instagram edits or dancing or music or whatever that stuff is like you got to go in and, and hit the ground running with the high school coach with the parents with the mentors with whoever's helping that kid in that decision um and so yeah does this you know this logo help absolutely you're going after a higher caliber kid but at the end of the day he's still a kid you got to go build the right way and try to you know get him to, to want to choose here did that help at all or was it kind of a trial by fire knowing that yeah, I mean, they made the conversations with the kids easier, you know, knowing, you know, what is you sell a vision of a program and you sell from the top down, then I can speak to that more because I've known Ryan for so long. So that probably helped, but like still at the end of the day, like I said, you got to go in and dig on these kids and show them who you are, what you're about, how you're going to develop them, how you're going to take care of them off, off the field. You talk to the parents, you talk to the coaches, and you just build it that way because it's, it's a relationship business. You know, if, if, as college football has become more and more of a business, then our business is still people. And so you got to be able to, to work those kids and do that. That's what I wanted to ask about, really, because if you look at, like, Tim, he coached with Urban Meyer and Ryan, obviously, and Luke Bickle with Terry, Ryan and Chip and you all together. I mean, how, how were those conversations with Ryan well, I mean, that, he did it the right way. I mean, he could do more detailed than that. It doesn't need to be. I mean, that's something Ryan could go. But there was – he's first class. He does it the right way. That's why he's a head football coach at Ohio State, right? So um, everything was gone about the right way through the discussions and those things. And then ultimately it was a decision that I had to make with what was best for me and my family and, and those things. And, Wound, wound up here. Yeah, you know what? I had to get the, the dust off the uh, cobwebs from the winter coats in the closet because we didn't need those much in, in uh, Westwood in Los Angeles. But yeah, I wouldn't say I missed it, but I'm getting acclimated pretty quick. How do you adjust to that mental shift? I mean, I, you know, the mirror athletes, you guys all have the same kind of mentality. But if you're talking about going from LA back here, in the middle of winter, uh, basically a, a win. Uh, I mean, it's a challenge. I got four kids and moving across the country, so uh, the timing of that, finding the home, but those are all things that go into it. Um, and you get into this business knowing that, you know. I mean, I, I was told that and learned that a long time ago from some older coaches where they started having kids and getting in the business of it is hard. You're going to miss some of these things. You're going to be separated and do that, but you know. Once again, growing up as a Big Ten kid, like the Rose Bowl was the mecca. My father and I wake up and you'd watch the Rose Parade and you'd get ready to watch the the sun going down over the San Gabriel Mountains in the third quarter. Like that was our world. That was a Big Ten world. 
Well, my office for the last four years was the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. So my kids got to go out pregame and postgame and throw the ball around and dance around. Like, they thought that was normal, right? Now here, coming here, their pregame are going to be down on the field at the Horseshoe, right? And the Ohio Stadium where their classmates would kill to do that or they once a year they get to go to a game and like that's normal for them so there's give and take to everything um so yeah in the heat of it now yeah i miss my kids i wish i was around them but we've presented that as a family and my wife and i to the kids like this is our adventure like this is what we do and here's why it's going to be this way but we get it you know santa claus comes to the bowl games a lot my kids don't know that santa claus comes to the house they're at what hotels he visit and make sure he can get there because it's just what we do Say again? Way bigger than I could get in Southern California. Yeah, I mean, as you recruit and you look at your board, you want to recruit so many tackles and so many interior guys. Um, you have to have swing guys because of injuries and all those other things that go. Um, but I've always been in the philosophy, like, you have to play your five best, right? So if you're, if the starting left guard, whoever it is, goes down, and the backup left guard is your ninth best guy, you're not going to put him and have your sixth best guy still sitting on the sideline. So does that mean your right guard goes to left guard because the backup right guard is six? You know, there's some gymnastics there. Um, like I said, you have to have guys that can play, you know, multi-flex positions because of injury, because you can only travel 10, 11, or 12. You're not going to have, you know, those full guys. So, I mean, yeah, you, to manage the roster, you want to have so many tackles and so many guards, and you'd like those guys to play that way. But every once in a while, there could be some the shell game going on of moving an outside guy inside or an inside guy outside so that your five best are playing to give you a chance to win a game. Is there, is there an overriding like, style or style you want to have like your offensive line to watch it? Uh, yeah, I've said this all the time. It's when, you're, when the offensive line position is felt, Meaning, you just there's a presence there. You feel it. It's something that's tangible, and that's when you're cooking, right? When my daughter's up in the tenth row of the stadium, and it's third and two, and she's like, "Daddy's gonna run it to the right," and everybody in the stadium knows that, and you still go do it. That's when you have people feel you. So, um, how do we get there? I mean, it's just once again, it's it's like beating a dead horse. It's development. It's putting tools in the toolbox for these guys. So, in a certain situation or a certain block, they pull it out and they go do it. Right? And that comes with repetition, that comes with film study, that comes with doing your stuff on the field so that when that opportunity shows up where they have to pull that out, then they just go do that. And that's what I mean by being felt. Like, we know what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and it exudes itself through the film, at the stadium, at the practice, with people there in person watching that. Justin, uh, OSU has been a pretty heavy stretch run team the last few years. It seems like you guys in UCLA have a pretty diverse run game chip there. Any talk with Ryan coming in here about helping diversify things a little bit on that end? Uh, we're going through cut-ups and watching stuff now. Um, like I said, that's that's really more personnel-driven. So what your guys do well and how you can put them in the most opportune position to do that. I mean, I yeah, my book of work, I've been able to do 22 personnel to 23. I mean, when Ryan and I were together at Boston College, we lined up with Andre Williams and we had three tight ends, a fullback and a tailback on the field and at the 50-yard line. So people would line up in goal line defense. But that's who we had and what we did, and so we got really good at that. Um, so, you know. That's a long-winded way to say, you know, not really a specific thing. It's just going to be a matter of seeing what we have, what they do well, and then how do we maximize that and window dress that and whatever the case may be getting into that moving ahead. What's the difference between trying to uh, maximize your personnel but also stick to an identity? I mean, you and, you and Ryan obviously want to establish an identity, but you don't want to do things that your personnel won't allow. Mm -hmm. uh, he's talking about stretch versus gaps. You, you did a lot of different things. And, UCLA, how, how do you kind of balance that as an offensive line to to not just work with your personnel, but also make sure that you're being true to yourself and your identity and not just doing what you do? Yeah, I mean, your identity becomes, though, what those kids can do really well. So the same deal. I mean, you get through spring ball and find out how these kids run, how they pull, how they whatever they do, how they change direction and some of the things that you do, then you start to hang your hat on, we can do this and here's how we can, like I said, window dress it a couple different ways. So, you know, you're really running the same stuff on two, but is it formationally different? Is it unbalanced? Is it with a different personnel in the game? But for those five, six guys up front, 
it is who you are, right? And then, so that's that's the fine line you always teeter with because you can't, you know, if you're a jack of all, you're master at none, right? And you don't get really good at anything, but you can't just pigeonhole yourself as well and be this all the time when you need a little variation. So that's that's as you go through spring, as we go through our cutups, we'll find out really where we need to head and what we're going to be. The word no doesn't exist. You can say whoa. Let's look at it. Uh, but kind of going back to the question we just had, like, well, that's not who we are. That's not what we do. So we're not going to do that. Well, then you're, you know, you can maybe get caught a little short that way. So the best thing about working with him was just was that in the run game and the throw game and protections of let's take a look at it. Can we make it efficient enough for us, or can we make it who we are? Now it wasn't always the finalized like yeah we're going to do that but there was never an ironclad of like no we don't do that it's you know let's see let's look at it let's talk through it let's twist it a little more so it becomes more like what we do but there's still a wrinkle here uh, awesome you know i mean i don't think kevin's ever been around been around a bad offense you know in his tenure so um, that's the beautiful part about this game is you start getting coaches and those guys you're all working together and you know it's a good little recipe and then obviously through the vision of what Ryan wants to do of you know cooking it up and then and putting it out that way so I just in a short time being around Kev and all these guys you know and we're in there with Kev and Tony and even Brian and and Corey and those guys diving in and everybody's talking their area of expertise within that play you know it's exciting because you know you know be able to come in and supplement that. Just when you talk about a clean slate going into spring and not forming evaluations maybe off of last year. What what would be your philosophy and how that shakes out? How you want what you want to see in these practices? Because last year there was a debate about this guy's a tackle or guard and, or just the five best, and that those maybe seem like they be the same thing, but they're not. Yeah, it, I think it'll shake itself out. But as you go into spring, what do you look for? You see how a kid competes. You see how he thrives when there's it's a little adversity. I mean, all these things sound a little cliche, but they're cliches for a reason because it's yeah, it happens, right? Yeah. So, however you want to put that. So, getting into spring ball, yeah. How is a guy from individual to a partial team deal? From a partial team deal to when the lights are on? Right? How does he play in that situation? Who is he next to? Is this guy, when he has these reps, look pretty good next to this guy? And then this one, when he's more on his own, not as good. So you start to kind of, you know, massage through that and figure that out. Um, but that's the, the best part about this game, honestly, is like the, the best players show themselves. Right? So whoever those five best are, they're going to they're gonna rear their head pretty quick. And then how do you accelerate their growth? That's our job as a coach. Can you just find your best five guys and they're kind of out there? Uh, I mean, yeah, in a perfect world, you'd love to say these are five and they go the whole time, but injuries, I mean, I've never, never is a long time, but I've never had a season where the same five guys stayed the whole time. There's injuries, there's matchups, there's things that go along that way. So you want to create as much depth and as many game-ready guys as you can. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we'll find that out as we keep moving ahead, too. When you evaluate Yeah, I mean, there's certain size. I mean, you're not going to take a 6'2 or a 6'3 guy and say, oh, this guy's a tackle, right? I mean, he would be more of an inside guy, but I, we've always evaluated off, and I didn't make it up. It's just, you know, it's kind of been time tested, but just looking at base, bend, balance, and burst. And if a kid owns those, how high is he on those scales? And then, you know, what can you develop? Because I've taken. 239 pound kids out of high school and been first rounders and I've signed kids that were 315 out of high school and they started for four years and went and played pro football too so there's they're going to come in all different shapes and sizes out of high school you really have to be able to project and look at those guys based off their skill set. What's the value of, of having a second year center for a first year offensive line coach? Um, well I mean anytime a guy's taking you know more reps in a batting cage the game is going to slow down for that guy, right? Um, you know, coming in and new terminology or, you know, what call was this? What call is that? Why did we ID this? To be able to go to the guy that did it and look at that, it was going to be helpful. When you look at, I'm sure you a little bit as well, you look at a guy like Luke um, and the way that he played last year as a first-year starter at center, uh, 
how much stock do you put into that and, and start to do you build out or you focus on all five guys or you know, you're trying to implement a new scheme. You've got a guy who's you know, supposed to be like, you know, the leader of the offensive line who's already played a year. Like, like how do you evaluate you know, where he is in his development? As, as a second-year center for a yeah. first-year offensive line. Yeah, I mean, for all those guys, you put them all, you know, when they're all in the room with you and you're watching film and you're communicating and you're talking, you just kind of grow and get a pretty good feel. Um, you know, I've done it long enough now where you can, there's a pretty good temperature gauge once you've been around a guy and talked with the guys enough. So for Luke, for all of them, the guys that played and the guys that kind of played a little bit, you get them, we get them in the meeting rooms and a little bit, uh, you know, position-specific conditioning leading up to spring ball. And then once again, once you get to spring ball, you start from the basics, you reinstall, and then you just see how fast those guys accelerate. Um, but yeah, it's not, for all those guys that played before, when you're watching a cut up and say, why did you do this? What was your thought? What was there? And then you can either, once again, enhance that or you can correct that. Um, so having more veteran guys, yeah, obviously is easier. And then for me, I would just use them more for, you know, verbiage and calls and things like that, um, adjusting to it. Cause, you know, once I said it before, it's blocking and tackling, right? So blocking is blocking. You call it a, this block, that block, or this block. Us two got to block those two guys. How do we get that done, and how do we get that communicated? And you just kind of go from there. What do you think are the things that you know, maybe you learned you know, with UCLA that, that you might be able to bring here and you know, help with the methods on oh, That's a really good question. Um, like I said, I think just what I learned and talking from Chip, but like enhance, like I don't need to come in here and, and reinvent the wheel. Offense here is really damn good, right? Um, so it's my job to come in and supplement that. You know, I just being being the coordinator there and not just a line guy coming here, being able to speak language and talk about the perimeter, talk about the outside, talk about how this play action really sets up with this run, which gives this concept openness. I think the experience of being a coordinator and running a room that way is really going to help be beneficial to these guys here because we're looking at the big picture together and not just living in the box. Is that weird at all to go from being a coordinator to now being a coordinator? Nah, no, the job's the job. You take over your room, you make your kids great, and you try to enhance the place you're at so you win, you know, play for championships and win them. Um, so, no, like I said, I'm not, I'm not hung up on titles. You know, I'm hung up on winning and losing. Um, and anything I can do to help these guys make sure that we win here, that's really what I'm, you know, focused on and all about. How much does it make the transition? Yeah, well, I mean, very. The, the, the learning curve is it's smaller, right? Um, if he says something or, uh, you know, his mindset or what's important to him and just seeing the way he goes about things, been there, done that, seen it before. So it's, I think it's just an easier bridge of getting back into the groove and, and building the program and the room and everything through his vision and what, he, what he's wanted. It's making it easier. Yeah, some of the door frames aren't big enough for him. When he walks through, he's got to duck his head and, and uh, yeah, bounce around. But he, um, he's a large human. <laughs> uh, it's exciting because you you know all these guys, you know him, him, and I mean, just all of. Them. But yeah, the the size they have, the ability level they have, their skill set. How do you just enhance that? Right? How do you make it so that on Saturday they're playing at a high, high level and you're winning games? Um, yeah. So like, thank God you're not paying for his shoes or his clothes because he's, you know, he's just he's a large human. <laughs> The same way you do all the guys, right? Is you you put them in the best best position for them to maximize themselves, and then just to help the team, right? I you know, repeat myself again and again, but those would be things that we dive into through the workouts, watching film, getting into spring football, um, you know. But it doesn't help whether you go inside to outside or outside to inside. If you played the game, the speed of the game, you know, you don't necessarily get incrementally faster the game slows down because of the way you process it. So for him being a full starter of last year, no matter what position he lines up and he's going at, the game itself is going to slow down a little bit because he's acclimated to it more. You know, the kids got a great energy to them. Like today was the first real day where we were just around them. They were in the weight room and running around, and we were able to walk through and, you know, see the kids and then up eating, you know, I ate breakfast or lunch with a couple of the guys. Um, 
just the presence of these kids is pretty exciting. Like they're just genuinely good people and you can sense that. When you're in recruiting and you're around enough people on out, you can sometimes you leave a high school or you leave a place and you're like your skin's crawling a bit like, yeah, that guy just rubbed me the wrong way. These guys here, they've they've done an unbelievable job of, of recruiting the right types of people on top of the right types of players. It's been that's been fun. Just the energy and the, they were running around here earlier in the woody and they were in with Coach Mick, you know, lifting and the the juice and the energy and all those things that go into it. Like, there's a lot of it here, and it's been that's been fun to see just in a short time being back. Because, I mean, I got hired. We had a couple of days in dead period, and I was recruiting. So I've been on the road for a big chunk of it. But just getting around in a short time, that's been fun. I realize it's a new job, a new situation. How much do you enjoy this time of year? The season's over, and you get a chance to increase that and start thinking about, hey, what are we building for a production? Yeah, I mean, all of it. You hit it all on. You know, this uh, the finishing of recruiting is good. Like, I'm the son of a high school coach, so, like, I enjoy recruiting. I like going out to the schools and talking to the coaches and talking to the administrators and going to basketball games, right, and get my popcorn and my peanut M&Ms and watching a little bit. That's all fun. And then you get off the road and you move to this, and that, that is fun, too, of – you're in cut-ups, you're doing ball, you're around your guys. Um, here, it's even more exciting because it's, you know, I've recruited some of these guys, a handful of them out of high school, but some of them are brand new. So building good working relationships that you can take ownership in, is, it's fun too. So, I mean, yes, all of it. You, know, you kind of answered the question with the question, but it's, it's very exciting. Anything else? Good. All right, thank you, Coach. Awesome.